all you visitors, thanks for coming today. This was Pastor Appreciation, Ministry Appreciation Day. It's certainly not like this every day, so maybe we ought to make it like this every day. <laughs> uh, thank you so much again. So appreciate it. Praise God. Um, let me just lay this foundation this morning. Go with me this morning real quick to Colossians chapter 2. I do want to take the opportunity, I didn't mention uh, the remodel was basically on completed, there's a few small things we're doing, but I, I do want to personally recognize Chad for all the hard work that he's put in to, uh, to that project. So Chad, would you stand up one more time, and just let's, I would really appreciate that, all the help, it's really meant a lot to me, and uh, Chad is a guy that knows, he's a, he's, he's a jack of all trades, and uh, he has helped me and helped navigate and has been on the phone with many of the people and just has made it move and I certainly appreciate that so thank you so much Colossians chapter 2 we're going to start a series we won't we'll just have to get a little bit into it today a series I've entitled uh, fact check I want to ask you guys a question this morning what is truth what is truth we hear a lot today about fact checking don't we we hear people say, well, we're going to fact check that. We're going to fact check whether you can go to this website and you can fact check this and you can fact check that. And we hear a lot about it. To fact check something is a term used to validate or to confirm truth of something said or done. That's what it means. When you fact check it, you're going to make sure what somebody's saying is true. Amen? Who do we believe anymore? What do we believe? We, we have this person saying one thing, the internet says this, Facebook says that. What do we believe? And as Christians, we, we need not to be people that are double-minded. That are double-minded. We, in many, many ways, you see across the board, the church is double-minded on many things. We're letting the culture dictate our lens. Now this series I'm going to start with you today, I may make you, make you feel very uncomfortable in the weeks to come, and I hope that I do. I, 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 I definitely will get many shouts, but we are going to start talking about issues, cultural issues that we are so divisive over. I'm going to talk about things in this series that may make you feel a little uncomfortable. But I don't know if we as a church and as the body of Christ needs to pick and choose social things. We'll say, you know what, this social thing, it's okay, but I don't know about this social thing. See, what's going on is we've made, so, we, we've made moral issues uh, political issues. I'll say that again. We've made moral issues political issues. That's what's going on. All of a sudden, it's a platform here and platform there, and people are building themselves on, on, on well, this, this, this person believes this, this person. Listen, we've made, uh, we've made uh, uh, moral issues about po political, political. We, we will build can people build candidacies on, on moral issues. What's the truth? What's the truth? The Word of God is being challenged today more than we have ever faced in our generation. And it's time to fact check. Romans 12 verse 2 in the Message Bible says this. Do, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Don't become so well adjusted to the culture that we just fit into this culture without even thinking about it. Come on somebody. Uh, uh, Jude, over there in Jude, uh, verse 3, there's only one chapter of the book of Jude. Jude writes, he said, listen, I'm writing to you that you would earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered. I want you to know something, this series about one thing. It's what God says about issues. Boy, that one went over real well. This is what God says about it. We're going to come in this message full of grace, full of truth. Come on. We're going, to, we're, going to be, we're going to be talking about things. Issues. Cultural issues. Moral issues. The church, and I say the body of Christ, has lost their way in a lot of areas. Because we're double-minded. And we think God and His Word changes. 
this Bible never changes. And God is who He says He is. And it's what He says in the Word, He means it. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. It says beware. Lest anyone. Cheat you. Beware. Lest anyone. Cheat you. Spoil. King James says spoil. I'm using new King James. Spoil you. Through philosophy. An empty deceit. According to the traditions of men. According to the basic principles of the world. And not according to Christ. The Apostle Paul was warning us. He said beware lest you be deceived. And you get spoiled. You get cheated because of philosophy. Everybody say philosophy. Philosophy is a worldview. We all have a philosophy we live by. Everybody in the room. We all have a philosophy we're living by. We all have a lens that we have. There's, there's a set of glasses that we wake up every morning and we put on. Whether you realize it or not, there is a lens. And that lens has been determined by a lot of things. That's it. Been determined by you know, family situations, current problems. There's all kinds of lenses. People have different, we all have a philosophy. He said, listen, I want you to watch your worldview. It's what he was saying. He said, you make sure that you're not being cheated through a wrong worldview. You make sure that you have the right worldview on. You make sure you have the right lens on. You make sure you have the right set of glasses when you wake up tomorrow. You make sure, he said, beware. Everybody say, beware. Be war. That's what actually this word comes out of to Be war. Be war. What's, what are you saying, Pastor Paul? You, we, we are at times in a war. We are counterculture. <clears throat> it is different. The way the kingdom of God operates, the way the Christian operates, is different than what the world operates. The kingdom of God operates differently than what the world operates, church. Our land should be different. It should be. Beware. Be war. Be on your guard. Have you been deceived in areas? What lens are you wearing? The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 25, There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. There's a, there's, there is, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to me and you. But just because it seems right to us, doesn't mean it's right. Amen. Jesus told us, he said, be very aware of the culture. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and beware of the leaven of Herod. He said, you better beware of the political spirit and you need to beware of the religious spirit. Beware. Jesus said it. Look what he says. I put it up on the board. Mark 8, 15. Look what he says. It's, he uses the same words. Then he charged him saying, take heed, Beware. Of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Leaven is an influencer. A leaven, leaven, leaven is a thing that influences, it permeates, it's reactive to a certain climate. That's what leaven is. It's a reactive, it reacts to certain climates, to certain things. So it has to be in the right environment. He said, beware lest you are being, being deceived, influenced by the political spirit and the religious spirit. Beware. Jesus was telling us. I told you before, a lot of people have made moral issues, political issues, which is, which is wrong. Christ, listen, write this down. Christ has not called us to be comfortable in our culture. Christ has not called us to be comfortable in our culture. Christ has not called us to be comfortable in our culture. If we are so easily fitting into our culture and we're beginning to be molded and shaped by the culture, we are in a wrong spot. We are called to be culture warriors. Listen, warriors, listen to me now. John 17, Jesus said it. He said, I have to, listen, you're in the world, but not of the world. 
Jesus said, I didn't, I didn't come to take you out of the world. I'm praying for you that the evil one will not touch you, but I'm sending you back into the world. Listen, God never insults. I know you've heard me say this a hundred times, but we'll say it again. God never, he never, he never isolates you from the world. He insulates you from the world. That's two different things. He isolates you. He doesn't isolate you. He doesn't, he doesn't say, well, we're going to all get in this church. And we're, no, no, no. We're going to go. At, we're getting ready to leave here in 15 minutes, and we'll walk out the doors, and we're going to begin culture warriors. We're going to be people with a different lens. Going to live our life and begin to affect the culture that is out there. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, you go and you preach the gospel in that sin-sick world. We are the agents of change. We are. But it's not, listen, we're going to talk about issues. But listen, it's not about hate. This is where we've been. This is where the church has been. I'm talking about the body of Christ. We see something that's wrong and we just forget. People are sinners. And you, you, were, you were one of those. That's right. You were a sinner at one. If you don't know, you was, you was a sinner at one time. What's your MO? What was your, well, what was your past, sinner? That's the way I operated, was sinner. So people that are sinning, this, is, this, this, is, this series is not about bashing anybody. I want to give you truth, that way we can get our right lens on, that way we can help people out of their mess. Come on, somebody. We think today in the culture that we're living in, if I don't agree with you, then you hate me. Come on. Are you kidding me? Because I, I'm, I'm loving you and telling you truth. That's hate. That's the way people, a lot of people see it. If you don't agree with this, then you hate me. If you have a D or an R behind your name, then you have to hate one another. Are you kidding me? This is where we're at as a church. Come on, somebody. The enemy's got in. And he's, he's divided. He's, you know why he's got the other hand? It's because we're so divided across the board. Divided. And where there's confusion, there's every evil work. Where there's envy and strife, James says that. Where there's envy and strife, there is confusion and every evil work. The quickest thing will open up the door for the enemy in your life, in the nation's life, in this church, is have envy, strife, and division. And it opens up the door wide open for the devil. Come on, somebody. What kind of worldview do you got? Now, I know I'm probably preaching to the band, to a lot of folks. I'm preaching to people that's probably going to agree with me. But we've got to be people of truth. We've got to be people of truth. And we gauge our life by the truth, not by the popular opinion of people. Come on, somebody. Are you with me here? Hallelujah. So I'm going to cover some things, some of the more divisive issues. Things like abortion. Things like uh, LGBT, Q, R, S, T, U, V. X, Y, and Z. I'm going to cover homosexuality, marriage. What is marriage? Well, I thought they loved each other. That We're going to cover that. Now, probably no, I say that in this room. Listen, there's probably people that's affected, has been affected, knows people like that. Okay? This is not hate. I'm just going to deliver truth and we're going to know how to help people. With grace. Holding the sign is not going to work. Loving people is going to work. But I'm going to love them the right way. I'm going to love them with truth. Come on. I'm going to love people. I'm going to look them in the eye, Billy. I say, I love you. See, Jesus done that with the rich young ruler. Remember that? It says Jesus loved him and said to him. See, he didn't see that. Well, it's all right. He said, no, listen. Sell all you've got. Take all. And listen, come on. He said he loved him enough and said, listen, your money's killing you. This is what you've, you're attached to your money. He loved him enough to tell him the truth. We're not like that today in this culture. Come on, somebody. We're going to talk about racism. Racism is alive and well today in America. Alive and well. And if, and if, you, got, if you have racist thoughts in your mind, I want you to come because the Lord's going to break it out of you. Come on, somebody. Are you with me here? 
I want to co- cover some of these more divisive issues. What do we do with it? We're in this culture, so what do we do as believers? Amen. In many ways, we feel backed into a corner, don't we? Let's just be honest. Let's just talk about how we feel. Let's just be honest. Many times we feel like we're backed into a corner, don't we? We, we feel like we're, we're, we're silenced. Uh, we feel like that we're being labeled negatively because of what we may stand for. Come on. And it, and it makes you question. If you don't watch out, you'll let the pressure make you question what you believe. I'll say it again because that's a good point. You'll, you'll say because so-and-so loves each other, then I, maybe, maybe I've got this wrong. Maybe this thing is fluid. Maybe this thing changes. Well, it's okay for me to feel this way. It's all right. If, see, this culture starts to come on you. If you don't watch out, you'll begin to be molded and shaped by the culture instead of the word of God. Listen, Jesus never called you to be comfortable. I'm telling you, he never called. He gave you the comforter for a reason. Because why? You're going to feel real uncomfortable. But you've got a comforter that lives on the inside of you. And you can have courage in the midst of all of this. And we can stand with truth. And we can proclaim truth with grace. We can do this with love. We can do this right. Come on, somebody. And we can stand and demonstrate the love of God, the power of God, right in the midst of a set pull the cesspool of stuff that's going on and pull people out of darkness into his glorious light and that's my call that's your call and it's time for you and I to do it right amen Amen. it's time for you and I to do it right it's time for us to do it right you can do it truth lives on the inside of you he lives in you what is truth truth is Jesus Jesus said in John 14 he said I am the way I am the truth and I am the life listen I'm closing maybe it's not about the issues at all maybe we need to get God back into the center of our lives maybe we need to get God back in the things in our world. Maybe that, and then maybe the issues will take care of themselves. Come on, somebody. Maybe the issue, and maybe it's, maybe it's, Jesus is inviting us to come to know him. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Listen, we can elevate. I love the word of God, but this is, listen, listen, listen. This book is to lead me to a relationship with God. You can idolize the word of God if you don't watch out. Jesus said it like this. He said, you think you search the scripture. You think by searching the scripture, you have eternal life. But Jesus said it like this. He said, they're just testifying of me. This book is to bring me into a relationship with God. This book is to bring me in to a face-to-face encounter with God. That's what this is for. It's about Him. And when we start loving God, It's amazing what starts to happen to our lens. Many times. We live in a self-serving, self-consuming, self-promoted, self-idolizing culture. And it's as old as the garden. And the enemy comes, church. And this is what he says. As old as the garden. Did, Did God really say that? That's what he used against Eve. Read it. Genesis 3. I'm not lying to you. Fact check me. (laughs) He says that. The enemy comes. He says, did God really say that, Eve? And Will God really do what he said he would do? The two things, the two questions that you and I are faced with all the time. Did God really say that? We live in a biblical, illiterate society. Campfire, people build their lives on campfire scriptures. I appreciate you guys and all the stuff you've done. But I'm going to tell you what, all, all of all that with my Jackson kayak, that's awesome. Was you a part of that? Is that why you called me about two weeks ago? <laughs> I appreciate all that, and I do. Appreciate every card. I'm going to tell you what's the greater thing for me. I'm going to read it to you.
2 John, 2 John, 1. Let's see if that's it. No, 3 John. Verse 4. Listen to this. This is what I want. This is pastor. I appreciate all the cards. Right? I love when I hear, I get notes. I love it. I love that. But listen, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear you walking in truth. Walking in love. Walking in God. And being victorious in your life. That's the greatest pastor appreciation gift that any pastor could ever get. Is to hear that you're walking in truth. And in this series, I want us to understand. So I want you to stay with me over in November. We'll start going towards Christmas in December. I want you to come back. Next week, I'm going to talk about the very foundation. What I'm going to talk about today, the very foundation of where this all begins. Man, listen, if you don't have the truth in your life, if you don't have the truth in your life, you and I will screw it up every time, I promise you. I've got to have truth. And there's some things I've got to get settled in my heart about this book. Because if you don't believe this book, you ain't going to be able to really see what I'm going to show you over the weeks to come. Amen? Well, that's, that's pretty good. We'll really get started, yes. So. Praise God. Come and play something, somebody. Somebody come or whoever. Yeah. Praise God. Why don't you stand to your feet for me? I'm glad for truth. How about you? I'm glad I got truth in my life. It's to do north. Man, if I find myself, I don't know what to do. I need to go back to my book. I need to go back to the map. I need to go back to the GPS. Put in the concordances, right? Let's find out what it says about our life. Church, there's something wrong when people think it's okay. Let's stick a probe up into a baby's skull at nine months in the womb and sucking somebody and sucking a baby's brain out. There's something wrong with the society that does that. Something wrong with it. Something wrong with it. When people say that a baby at, at, in the womb doesn't have a constitutional right two minutes prior to being birthed. There's a problem. We become numb to it. We see it every day. We see killing and murder. And we see it all on the news all the time. And we become numb to it. You think it's okay to attack a black man or to attack a white man or attack a red man. I think it's all right to do that. It's not all right to do that. We're, be we're believers. We're Christians. It's okay, you're saying. It's all right for little Sally to have two moms or two dads. And we waver between those opinions. And we compromise. And we have whole denominations that will, right, will rightfully stand. Not rightfully, will stand. And in their right thinking, thinking they're, they're right, thinking they're right, will stand and ordain somebody. Are, 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 you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. And this might not be popular. Probably, maybe some of you, yeah, you'll all come back. Praise the Lord. If I make you mad, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Because I'm not going to preach my opinion. I'm going to preach what God's Word says. I'm not a hater I love people I have ministered to many people struggling with different issues of life one sin I mean 
It's all the same as sin. I mean, I know there's different, there's different levels. We could talk about that. That's another sermon. Sin is sin. It's sin. So I want you to come back. Bring somebody with you. Let's find the truth. Let's fact check it. Amen. Jesus, we love you. And I do thank you so much, sir. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the word of God. and The truth that you've given us. Many people in the room today, God, these are great folks. And they're full of truth. But Lord, there's always more. Lord, I need. I need discernment more than I've ever needed it. We need your discernment. The world is aching for the truth. It's aching for you. For the church to be the church. To be the pillar and the ground of truth that we're all called to be. Sir, today, this church will be a place of truth. This place will be a place of love, grace, but also truth. Because it's the truth that makes us free. So today, God, I pray your blessing upon this word, this series, believing God for just truth to come forth in our lives, God, to be grounded in it. We need to have an answer, Father, in our hearts for those that ask us of the hope that's in us. But let this series, God, they may, many, maybe all of us in this room would agree with me, agree with your word. But God, let us have this word in our heart that they will, we'll be able to teach that to someone else. That we can show that, 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 that 19-year-old, that 17-year-old, that 16-year-old, that 25 or 28-year-old girl that's contemplating ending a child's life. That we can show them truth. But also, God, be the, be the reconcilers. That those that have committed these things and have done these things can find health and shelter and find healing in the Father's arms. Lord, let us be people that are reconcilers. Not people that divides, but people that reconciles. So, Lord, I thank you today for all that you've done. We love you so much.